K1TV. Eine Sendeanstalt der Universität Stuttgart Fakultät 1, Architektur und Stadtplanung. Right, so good evening uh, to everyone and welcome to the online IOS lectures. My name is Vladislav Teminski and I'm happy to take care of the lecture series this semester on behalf of the IUSD team. But first, let me begin with formalities, informing uh, all of you that our tonight's lecture uh, is being recorded. Also, please make sure that your uh, at least mic is uh, muted. I think uh, there should be no problem with the camera if you like for us to be visible and for everyone else. Um, yes, so that's uh, it from uh, my side at the moment. And now I think um, it's a good uh, chance to pass the word to Professor uh, Dr. Astrid Lai, who is the Chair of International Urbanism Department, Co-Director of the Institute of Urban Planning and Design at the University of Stuttgart, Vice Dean of the Faculty of Architecture and Urban Planning and Course Director at the Master degree program on integrated urbanism and sustainable design. So I think, I, I, I hope I, I didn't forget anything. <laughs> yeah. thanks, for, thanks for putting so many hats on. But um, no, a, a very warm welcome to everybody. I'm, I'm so excited that we managed now to transfer our IOD lectures into the digital space. And that's thanks really also to Flash. Um, and I just hope the IOSD lectures are always a format which is a bit outside the regular curriculum, a space for exchange, a space for getting interesting input. Um, often IOSD alumni join us and people from elsewhere. And I think the exciting thing is with the digital space, we can even expand that community. Still, I hope we have this kind of intimacy of exchanging and then asking questions and having a vivid exchange. Uh, uh together so um i really hope we have a good start and hope you all enjoy it thanks Vlad. thank you astrid um yeah actually before we start um i'd like to also mention that this semester i'm very happy that we are cooperating with uh, an institution i was uh, a part of for a very long time and it's connection school for urban studies who is also helping us to promote the ice lectures format as well as cooperating within this exchange because Connection School has very different directions of activities. One of them is Connection School Talks and I see some of the Connections guys joining today. So happy to see you and you're very welcome to attend uh, other IUS lectures. Uh, right, um, now a few words about today's agenda. Um, after this introduction, I will be happy to pass the word to our today's speaker, Dr. Luca Battellini who is a professor of urban planning and regional planning at the University of Amsterdam, with a research and taking, uh, teaching focus on the integration of transport and urban planning for humane, sustainable and just cities, concepts and practices to enable transformative urban and mobility change, and the ways of enhancing collaboration across different academic disciplines and between academia and society. The lecture will be followed then by a half an hour discussion session, kindly moderated by uh, another my colleague, Francisca Schreiber, Research and lecturer at the Chair of International Urbanism at the University of Stuttgart. And now I think it's a perfect moment to also uh, invite our audience to participate in this uh, discussion uh, session. So please into the chat during the lecture and uh, we will collect them and uh, announce to our speaker uh, in the second half of the event. Now, dear Luca, finally the floor is yours, I think. Yeah. No, thank you very much. It's great uh, to be here. I think maybe somebody has still uh, their microphone on, but uh, it's fine. I, I start sharing my first slide. Um, so again, great to be here, even if in, in this kind of a strange way, but it's already seen some faces and uh, smiles and people that already made me willing to have a conversation. Um, so uh, we'll try to have a conversation. So today I really hope that uh, my, my lecture will be the start of a conversation today and maybe also, um, also in, the, in the future. So you, you know the title, uh, From Streets for Traffic to Streets for People and How Can Street Experiments Transform Urban Mobility? So, 
it's really not about only about uh, what you know what are these experiments, but also this idea that they can be a way of transform urban mobility in a particular direction. Um, yes, I'm not going to tell you what this slide is about. Maybe it, you should you should know it's a, a small quiz. Maybe we can pick this up uh, at the at the end. So what I I want to do in this. I think I got 45 minutes, but maybe uh, less. And, and really, I think the discussion uh, will be important is to go through these three, try and give an answer to three, uh, these three uh, questions. The first is why, why should we experiment with city streets? So that's, that's question one. The second is what are city street experiments, at least in my, in my interpretation? And third, uh, but not least, how can city street experiments be transformational? How can they be uh, a tool of, uh, of uh, systemic change in urban mobility? Now, and before I start, I want to have a little, already have a little conversation with you in this, um, in this way, at least get some, some input, get some feeling, what, what, what thoughts are you in your, in your head? So what I uh, ask you is to uh, you know, think your own answer to these questions. What are city streets for? And uh, okay, what are city streets for? And think up to three keywords that uh, capture your personal answer to this question. Um, you might want to make a note of, of that, uh, and I'll ask you, give you a way to to input that in a while, uh, but something, okay, what are city streets for? So that's now what you have to do to let everybody know what it's in your head. So you, uh, with any device, the one you are on now or another one, uh, go to uh, this website, sensesteps.me, and log in with uh, the word streets. Uh, you can also text and type, but uh, I would say the first method is the, the easiest. I see uh, quite a few people are already logging in. You can keep doing it also when I move to the next slide, which is the important one, uh, because uh, here is where you can input your, your answer. So, up to three keywords, so you can use one, two, maximum three. You can here give your answer to the question, what are city streets for? Okay, I see some, somebody already started. Let's see what happens. Okay. I can start seeing what kind of people you are <laughs> by the words that are here. Being, of course, interesting to do this also in some other context. I know where the trees come from. <laughs> it must yeah, you know, be. Of, of course, you know how this works. So the, the bigger the bigger the word, the more people have uh, put that in, and of course. Sometimes there are slightly different words that mean the same, they're counted as different. But you know, the 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 the, the, the picture is already there of of uh, many different things. Um, and and you know, and things that uh, yeah, just think as those two bigger bigger ones, people in mobility, not let alone trees and others, that can you know, reinforce each other, be, be symbiotic even in a way, also they can be in conflict, uh, in conflict with each other. And actually we might uh, go back to this at the end and see if 
it has uh, uh, changed uh, in any way, uh, but now uh, I would like to go further, but somehow I can't. So <laughs> maybe I go out. Um, okay, somehow it says frozen, so maybe I stop sharing and I start again. So let's go here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's share again. Yeah, so the image will come back with all the, the names, but, but the point uh, which now in another way you, you see all those different things, and of course this is a slightly different, uh, different uh, uh, context, but you do see people in mobility, for instance, and, and you do see their 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 uh, you know symbiosis, but also uh, also conflicts, and of course you can also think that all these uses are, are different different contexts. Uh, they keep evolving, and 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 and, and they ask for for uh, for some uh, yeah, for, for for something to 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 kind of find a way of possibly realizing the the, the, the synergies, but also managing all these conflicts. So that's that's one one part of the answers why experiment with city street. Uh, a second one, uh, which is uh, very important and, and a historical perspective will uh, help a lot uh, uh, focus on, is that the decisions you make, the way you you decide to to, to arrange to probably to enable some functions, uh, hamper others favor some combinations and, and uh, uh, impede others, it's, it, it's different. And, and for instance, has changed a lot across time. Of course, also different uses, different demands came on, but uh, there, was, there were also different decisions. And for instance, here you see the same street and also taken from the more or less the same point of view in Amsterdam in three moments in the, in the past. And, uh, you don't only see uh, different uh, uses, different components, but also different ways of um, of uh, arranging them, of uh, of uh, different priorities, for instance, given to uh, to uh, different different uh, uses and uh, elements. Um, the 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 next point is that uh, yes, streets are very concrete, visible, or something we, we experience in a very direct way, but of course they are not uh, in any way isolated. They are uh, uh, connected to order, urban orders at a higher level, uh, often much less visible, uh, but, uh, but uh, not the least uh, very present. So let, let me illustrate this with an example with um, uh, from Amsterdam. This is how in Amsterdam in the 60s we were thinking about streets. And so streets, uh, especially uh, main streets, uh, uh, meant for uh, for fast traffic, uh, cars here uh, above ground, but underground a metro uh, also uh, thought about something for fast traffic. And it's only main streets, also the places with big concentration of functions in a monofunctional setting. Uh, um, where to be uh, to be placed, but it's not a street here. Actually, is a whole idea of a city that that street materialized. Because if you look at the plans for Amsterdam in that in that era, it was uh, all about concentrating uh, again the monofunctional functions, main metropolitan functions, offices, service, commerce, and a few nodes in the city center and a few other nodes. Um, pushing uh, uh, residential uses outside of uh, the city, in the periphery, with uh, new, newly developed uh, uh, neighbors, uh, neighborhoods, 
and having these fast connections, this street as the one I showed us connecting uh, these two uh, concentration of functions. If you now uh, flash forward, if I, if I move forward, uh, um, you know, a couple of decades in, in the 80s, and also literally walk down this street, uh, which I show you, you will end up in a very different kind of uh, street. And, 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 and it's interesting because here again, the metro is still underneath. The metro was built in the end. What was supposed to be built here uh, on the ground was you know, somewhat similar to what you have seen. But of course, what has been built is very different. And what after the 70s in the 80s and later, the way in Amsterdam was uh, thought about streets was a very different one, it was one where it was not just cars, it was different sorts of mobility, and one where it was not about uh, you know, demolishing and, and reorganizing the city in the way I said, but it was much more about preserving um, the, the original uh, fabric and urban fabric, and also much more finely grained uh, mix of functions. And, and the kind of mobility was also very different. It was not so much, not, all, not so much cars, but bicycles, it also not so much metro, that's important, it's not just public-private, it's also about the tram. So a very different kind of transport, much more diffused in its accessibility and much slower. And, and even in this case, what's behind that is a very different idea of, of the city. Here again is the, where the, the street is located, which is exactly the, the following up the, the section that I just showed you. But what you see is a very different idea of the city, that very large red, uh, red uh, area is an area of mixing. And right? it's not, no functional separation, concentration. It's a, a very fine grain mix, mix of housing, jobs, uh, uh, residents, which is much more conducive and, and symbiotic with mobility means such as uh, bicycles and, and and trams. And again, you see those two orders, those two, two ideas of what a city is, uh, are made visible, visible and concrete in, 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 in those streetscapes. Um, the, the change from one to the other, uh, it's not, was not in, in any way a natural process, and not, not even an easy one. Uh, it was not that planners and, and, and policymakers and politicians wake up one day from the other side, you know, oh my God, what are we doing? We should really change uh, direction. That's not the way to go. No, it, it didn't happen like that. Actually, the most uh, policymakers, politicians, planets were really convinced that that was the way to go. It was, you know, good. It was modern. It was uh, for, uh, for the benefit of all. Uh, that's not what uh, 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 others, uh, citizens, uh, both residents and also uh, young people, uh, thought uh, started op opposing this idea. It started also experimenting, try, you know, trying doing actions uh, like this one, uh, which uh, uh, you know uh, express a very different idea what a street uh, is. Yeah, uh, we, we should remember that bike lanes didn't didn't exist uh, in in Amsterdam then and. And, and, and later, as you see, they, were, they become part of, of mainstream street design, but actually the first uh, experience were this kind of actions uh, by, uh, in the, uh, by citizens in the 70s. And it was, by the way, not always, you know, such a ludic and, and soft exercise. Some of, I think, the heaviest riots in the whole history of Amsterdam since World War II were about this shift in urban in urban development, but also in, in transport development, also in street development, with uh, the, the, the 1975 New Marx riots as, as a sort of high point of this of this of this um, of this of this shift, um, and eventually, so also the, the the policymakers, planners, and politicians shifted, and then you get this kind of streets that uh, that I showed. So, so to sum up, uh, this this. Uh, first part, uh, okay, the question, why should we experiment with city streets? Uh, first, uh, multiple and evolving uses, both, both symbiotic and conflicting, uh, the, the picture, but also your, your word cloud, it's, it's already um, in there. Second, and, and history helps a lot in that, and doing some work with, with historians that are looking much further back, is really 
uh, inspiring how uh, to realize how you know the, the, the streets that we have that we might assume are the norm are, are totally the product of uh, uh, a convention and also uh, part of our decisions we make that could have been different decisions. So it's, it's always possible to arrange streets in different ways. Uh, uh, third, uh, that is a very different debate because actually it's a debate at a very concrete level, at a level where issues are visible, people can experience them uh, 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 literally, uh, but refer to much higher uh, 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 urban orders, but also abstract that otherwise might be more difficult to to address. And 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 both these street arrangements, urban orders, can be contested. So these all together are reasons to experiment uh, with city streets. But what are city street experiments? So that's that is the second question. So let, let me propose the, this definition that, uh, that uh, uh, I use. So uh, they are an intentional temporary change of the street use regulation and or form aimed at exploring systemic change in urban mobility. So here there are a, a few points that are important, intentional. I mean, you could say experiments happen all the time. Eh? It's, and maybe they're also very interesting. I mean, Spain is seeing that change and, and people doing things differently that that maybe they are expected to. And that may be very interesting. But he, the, here is intention. So there's a collective decision. Let's try something out. Temporary is not something that certainly at the beginning is meant to be permanent. And it's about, uh, I would say, a combination of use, regulation, and form. And the last point is also quite important. They're not an end in itself, uh, uh, not like just a marathon or, or, or a street party. You do this to explore systemic change in urban mobility and explore both in the sense of understanding what the possibilities are, but also what might be barriers, uh, and, and also to actually trigger that uh, potential uh, systemic change. Now, and the street experiments uh, I'm interested in and, and, and I'm focusing on today, and again, I'm open to different, to different interpretations, also what a street experiment is and certainly what systemic change is. But the one I'm interested in and that I'm focusing on today is captured by this idea from streets for traffic to streets for people, which is also illustrated by, by this, this one experiment that, that was took place in Amsterdam a couple of years ago, the same street uh, uh, on a normal day, normal, again, uh, it's, it's up to discussion, why do we think that is normal and this is not normal, but anyway, normal and the same street and place during the experiment. And, and here the, the, the shift is clear from the idea that the, the, the main, uh, if not only functional street is, is traffic, and of course, that's very often cars and, 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 and trucks. But, but to me, it, it's beyond that. Uh, it's, it, it, it's traffic. Uh, it, it, it could also be uh, a bicycle or, or public transport. Actually, uh, many of the streets in, in, in Amsterdam are much more varied than just for cars, but are still primarily for traffic. Whereas the second uh, uh, picture, this idea for people, of course, there is mobility, which maybe is much more often non motorized mobility, but it's not only that, it's also quite crucially the street as a public space, as a, as a place for, for, for play, for socializing, uh, for relaxing. And so it's, it's uh, uh, you know, uh, Discovering or be rediscovering a function of streets that go much beyond uh, 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 traffic. Now, in this kind of experiments, and in, in a sense, it's quite we are incredibly running behind as as researchers. And there's hardly any research on this. So to me, it was really surprising when I did a review of this, at least in the field of transportation research, urban planning. That, as, as I will discuss later. The only only research I could find is it comes for the field of public health. It's quite interesting, but in practice, there's an incredible lot happening. The last couple of day, day, decades, there are literal explosions of this kind of 
experiments we are trying to uh, to make an inventory or at least a visualization and and and, and also to be also some inspiration in um, in um, in, uh, in Instagram uh, uh, that site that we develop and we have also a companion uh, a website we try to make it more analytical but it's all work in progress but it, it can give you uh, how much of this is happening and, and really all over the world that's also fascinating is it's really a global a global phenomenon and it's also a phenomenon that's also uh, fascinating as far as I'm concerned it has been uh, got an incredible boost by the uh, the present crisis the, the present pandemic uh, where of course all cities across the world have to come up with social distancing measures in public space to manage the pandemics. But a lot of cities, and, and, and I'm sorry, I mean, this is a picture from Amsterdam, I'm sorry, so certainly not the best example. There are uh, cities that are much more ambitious in this respect, are really using this not only as a, as a, you know, a way of managing this temporary crisis, I mean, assuming it's temporary, but that's what we all hope, and, and, and Probably also, it's also likely in many in many ways, but also to see this as a street experiment in the way I say I, I, I define so as a way of exploring a transition, a transformation of the urban mobility system in that direction uh, that I I suggested. There there are some some very uh, some sites are really making an inventory of all these experiments around the world. It's really hundreds, if not thousands, of these things going on, so there's a lot happening, and 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 which, which begs to okay, let, let let's try and, and order uh, a little bit uh, what, what, what's happening and what um, I'm doing here also done in a paper that I've seen that there is at least one of you read, <laughs> uh, read is to uh, to propose a, a quite simple typology, and I agree. There were also some discussion with some reviewers. You could have also different typologies that totally open, and and, and maybe it's also uh, very some you know it, depending on the aim, you should do different typologies. But a quite simple one, which kind of follows uh, how uh, you know how uh, it, it, uh, uh, the scope uh, of, of the experiment, how, how much of the street is changed, and, and, and uh, is, is one where, uh, like the one I proposed, where uh, it starts with experiments uh, remarking street, playing with different markings of streets, experiment to focus on parking, giving a different purpose to uh, parking, moving to experiments that uh, repurpose parts of streets, and finally experiments the the the, the try repurpose um, entire streets. And I will now you show some some examples, also uh, sometimes some some iconic example that the pioneers uh, in, in in each of, of these, and also uh, some of the impacts that have been measured. And again, uh, most of those impacts, if not all, come from research done in the field of public uh, health. There's hardly research in fields like uh, uh, transportation research, urban planning, urban design on this kind of experiments. And for those interested in the details of all this, um, I can uh, refer to my article, which is a review of many more articles. So there's a, you, you can get more, more of this information. So let's start with this idea of remarking streets. And, and the iconic example is, is what is called intersection repairs. It's an idea that is um, emerging uh, in, uh, in Portland, Oregon, in the US in the, in the 90s. And the idea is quite simple, is to, uh, to paint a mural in the, in the intersection of a street, sometimes also place a couple of uh, amenities on the, on the sidewalk, not, not in the street, maybe a little tea kiosk, maybe a bench or a, or a, or a free uh, library, I mean, mini library, that sort of things. Uh, also quite important is the fact that doing the mural, the mural is a, is a collective activity by the, the, the residents uh, themselves and the purpose, uh, and you see, and, and I choose this and not for instance, uh, bike, you know, pedestrian crossings or, or bike lanes, because that would not fit. My point is not just moving from motorized traffic to, uh, to non-motorized, but it also 
uh, reclaiming the notion uh, the the Fanchley Street as a so as, as a public space which is not just mobility and and the the, the goal of this interstate is repairs have this combination it is about slowing down traffic making making uh, the streets safer but it's also uh, creating a place that could be a place for uh, interactions among neighbors uh, including the very fact of doing this uh, uh, together and uh, uh, in, in, in the last decades th this idea has been literally exploding all over the world and 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 it's a true global phenomenon. This picture is from Mumbai, but it's 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 definitely not just a global north uh, phenomenon. It's a it's a truly uh, global phenomenon. Uh, very little research, actually. In this case, the only research I could find that that you know in a, in an academic uh, it's a rigorous way has measured impact is uh, research on the on the Portland case. And summing up what uh, what these researchers found, they found with, with quite rigorous comparison between similar neighborhoods before, after, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, they found out uh, a significant effect on on social and pedestrian interactions. There were much more in these places. Uh, increasingly, liability uh, measured at, at the hand of, of scores that people gave to the liability of their neighbors uh, neighborhoods. Also, uh, positive impacts on physical and mental health, and, and the only a few concerns, concerns, but it were really a minority of people on the study issues. Of course, there were some discussions about the mural, and also about the negotiation that sometimes you have to do with your neighbor could be could be uh, tiring. Um, so that's that's uh, the first step. And if we move up uh, to, to to the scope to challenging. Parking, uh, yeah, and, and and that's of course itself a very interesting uh, idea. As we know, parking is is a huge consumer of space in our cities, and also an incredibly efficient one. Uh, I mean, park, cars are park and you not know, used for something like ninety five percent that order of magnitude of of, of the time. So a huge uh, consumer space. Remember also that pe that picture of the the Armstrong Street. But of course you have many in your mind. And in, in 2005, um, a design firm in San Francisco had the idea, and, and there are you know some that say you know it was already some years before somewhere else in Hamilton, Ontario, in Canada. But anyway, the the the, the famous first time. Is this idea they had in San Francisco rebar? They 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 paid for a for a parking lot a meter. Uh, they put the money in the meter, but instead of, of putting there a car, they put there a temporary um, garden. Um, and 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 this has later become known as a sparklet. There's also a, a day in the year where a lot of cities around the world. Do this parking uh, day. It's, it's it's really uh, also exploded. It's also something that in hundreds of countries and cities uh, uh, happened. Um, and in San Francisco, it has been uh, uh, entirely institutionalized. There's now an organization that manages this whole process, which is often initiated by residents, but but uh, uh, more often even by, by, by businesses. Uh, you, you can imagine, you know, they, they can create uh, potential um, you know, flows of people and or, or just people stay there where, where they have their businesses. But it's, it's definitely not only in San Francisco, it's all over the place. But also here is quite surprising the only uh, rigorous research, uh, and again, uh, maybe I should also say that my reviews are limited to the English-speaking uh, world or writing more. So maybe there is fantastic research in Germany that I don't uh, know of that would be uh, great. Um, but what this research has found is uh, yeah, positive but really weak impacts on pedestrian station activity. And, and also social regions, mixed impact of, on businesses and, and special imbalance of impacts. And the special imbalance is about the fact that because of, of the process of these things, these, these uh, uh, 
carpet, at least in San Francisco, tend to be in the commercial areas where businesses want to sponsor them, to, to and, 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 and much less in disadvantaged neighborhoods of neighborhoods where there is not a lot of uh, uh, commercial activities. This is actually an experiment where you, you also see some, some more than in other cases, some quite critical uh, notes uh, in, the, in the literature. Now, if we then make the next step and, and move from just parking to, to portion of streets, it's not the whole street yet, is uh, the, the, the iconic example is the, the best known anyway example is the pavement to plaza uh, program in, in New York City in, in the, in the uh, early 2000s, um, the time when uh, uh, Janet Sarikan was, um, let's say, was responsible the transport commissioner um, and, and, and Bloomberg was, uh, was, was the mayor. And they did experiments like this. This is the most famous one in, uh, in Times Square, uh, where they, uh, in portion of streets, uh, again, this is important. It, it was hardly ever that the whole street, uh, it was also hardly ever about uh, blocking traffic. Actually, one of the goals was not to uh, decrease traffic uh, or, or reduce parking uh, supply. Uh, so that's quite different than other experiments. But it, it was to increase the, the public space uh, function of streets, uh, first temporarily, and then if, if the things worked, if there was enough, enough uh, consensus, as in the case of Times Square, uh, to make it permanent. What, what, what makes this example interesting, again, on, on one hand, is the scope or the ambition, which may be somewhat lower, so in terms of reducing uh, motorized traffic, but it has a clear, there is a clear connection between the experiment and permanent change, which is much weaker in uh, most, if not all of the others. And I will come uh, back to this because this is a crucial point. Uh, yeah, this, this experiments in, in um, and their aftermath in New York have been uh, uh, evaluated mostly by, by the city itself. And in the case of, of, um, of Times Square, but it's not very different in other cases, uh, more walking, cycling, and bus use uh, has been has been uh, measured. Less injuries to everybody, basically. A neutral positive impact on traffic flows. The, that for them was quite important because they did not want to increase congestion to to reduce uh, uh, car traffic or or, or 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 reduce parking for that uh, matter. And after the the change, uh, it was made permanent. Uh, there was a clear indication of increase in retail sales and rent, so a, a clearly an economic, uh, an economic um, effect. Even here, by the way, quite a select, most of these changes are in commercial areas, are in uh, upscale areas, uh, business improvement district, and, and the rest. There are a few in, in more peripheral or residential areas, but it, they're, they're quite skewed, similar to the to the parklet uh, case. Now, and here is a picture, a bit zooming out, uh, to realize that, you know, maybe you see that less in, in pictures around the world, but still, it's not that the main uh, idea that streets are for traffic uh, is uh, radically uh, challenging, at least up, only up to a point. Now, the case is different in the next example, play streets. Um, uh, where the, you know temporarily, but but uh, uh, entirely, uh, streets are closed to uh, to traffic and opened, uh, closed open. That's also interesting how we use this term to um, to, to play. And and uh, this has also quite interesting history. It was started in New York in the twenties, when when cars uh, first appeared to the, the streets and created all sort of safety issues. So it's a very interesting debate, by the way, then, because uh, uh, actually the beginning, the, the, the really uh, the, the you know, people, but also institutions were not happy with this car because they, they saw how they, they were in conflict with how streets were used, among others, uh, for uh, play. And uh, things evolved, uh, as, as we know, but in the case of play, uh, 
but they started in New York in, in the early uh, 20th century to display streets to still give uh, children the possibility to, to play safely, at least temporary, at least in some areas of the street. The ideas were was picked up uh, in the UK, where in more or less the same time also a lot of these things happened. But interestingly, after World War II, they were forgotten. Uh, the idea that was, you know, playing the streets is not something of the time of our time; it's something of the past. You know, suburbanization was was exploding, so the idea was, you no, know, children can play in their gardens or or in other facilities. Thought for that, but also interestingly, in the last ten to twenty years, they have picked up. Again, in, in UK, uh, again, but also Belgium, where this picture is taken, is also a pioneer in this area and, and, in, and in many other uh, places. And, and what, what research, and there is, in, again, limited to the field of public health, but it's quite some good research, limited, but, but quite rigorous research on display uh, streets. Uh, with, with clear effect on, on the physical activity of children, safety, uh, and quite interestingly, also clear uh, positive effect on social interaction and cohesion, not only between children, but also among parents. Eh? Because, of course, children are out, maybe parents go also out, start talking with other parents. So it really creates a social dynamics that goes beyond, beyond children. Now, last but not least, uh, we get to the, yeah, in a way, most most uh, radical example. So the, the, the whole street, uh, at least in space term, in time terms, it's a different uh, issue in many cases, maybe one day a year that this happened, but there are cases like, like Bogota, who is here, the, the pioneer already in the 70s, they started also here in this picture. Well, by now, it's, a, it's, it's a something that happened many times a year, and, and it's, if it's not every day, it's going in that direction. But there are huge differences in the world where, where for instance, U.S. Uh, open streets being of the one time a year type, a sort of carnival, and the Latin American ones, which are also normal, very, very extensive, they being of the, the recurring, uh, recurring type. Uh, and of course, there are examples also also in other places. And the idea here is, uh, uh, yeah, again, similar to the play street, close to motorized traffic and uh, open it to, to no motorized traffic, but also physical activity and often all sorts of other uh, uh, events. There's often also quite a lot of programming of activities going on uh, in these moments. It's also the one that probably has the most, the most uh, uh, research Again, limited to the field of public health, but nevertheless, quite quite a few, uh, a, a lot of works that uh, coming up with with a quite consistent picture of more physical activity, more walking inside, inside in say, clearly less car traffic, not just in the streets but in the cities. Eh? Maybe people uh, going to these places not by car but in other ways. Increased safety and and interesting that some articles also measured also increased safety in, in terms of crime. Eh? So social control in a way, the eyes on the street has also not an effect on traffic safety, but also uh, uh, crime and also positive effects on, on social interaction and cohesion and mixed effects, you know, big, big positive, big negative, neutral on, um, on business uh, activity. Again, with, with quite some differences in different cases, and with, with, with how often and how esten extensive as, as a key factor. Eh? Because again, we go from once a year to, to every week or, or, or even more often, and, and from, from a few hundred meters to, to, to many, uh, many kilometers. So there are quite big differences in the scope of this uh, experiment. But if I have to, to sum up, all, all these effects uh, in one in one sentence. What uh, you know, there are some there are differences. But if, if I had to sum up the message of all these experiments, is that the effects are are of less traffic space and more social space in in, in many of its dimensions. Um, and and uh, yeah, I can't not resist showing this because I think. 
This is from one of the articles that study the impact of, um, um, of play streets. And, 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 and this drawing, uh, to me, is, is read away, sums it all up. So what this researcher asks, they ask uh, a children living in a play street and ch children living in a, in a control street, so a street in a similar neighborhood with a similar kind of uh, residential uh, demographic buildup, etc. They ask them uh, two questions to say, okay, make a drawing titled My Street, and make a drawing title, where do I play, I play here? And uh, yeah, so here is where this, this child uh, living in a place street, this is how she uh, uh, draw her street, and this is how she uh, draw her I play here. And uh, this is uh, when asked the same questions, this uh, boy or girl, it's difficult to, to see, probably a boy, that's what he draw uh, to uh, in answer to the question, this is my street and I play here. So I think uh, this <laughs> visualizing a profound and I would say even disturbing uh, way, a mix of happiness and sadness, uh, the point that all this, this, uh, this uh, impact studies made. Now, which uh, of course then leads us to the third and, and final but important question, okay, but all these effects, what happened after the experiment? And, and, and this is a very important question because all this, uh, well, also because uh, all of these studies are really only about what effects during the experiment. Uh, there are very few that look at any effects after the experiment, even they say, uh, we, we should, but, but at the same time, the, the, the reason to do that is also limited because most of these have no follow-up. They don't become permanent. Right? So they are uh, temporary. Maybe they're in the start recurring, but uh, it's, 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 it's not. I mean, there are exceptions. Again, the payment to Plaza is, an, is one, even though the scope is more limited, as I said. But raise the question, what happens after... Uh, the experiment, and if we think, okay, actually the sort of change that that we see here should have some effect after the experiments in terms of something changing also permanently, then the question arises, okay, but how can we make the city street experiments that apparently have this impact in a limited way, and again, it could be that research is not doing that, but you you uh, do also see that often they, they stay temporary, for, for instance. So how can we make these experiments uh, uh, more transformational? And it, it's here that that um, uh, uh, I think a, a, a notion that's that's been developed in the field of transition studies, field that it's it's concerned itself with with what they call social technical transition. So transitions in, in society at the interface of technology and society. In the past, especially a big technological change, also the, the, the advent of cars, for instance, or the shift from sail ships to, uh, to, to, uh, other, to, to, to power shift, uh, ships, but they are more and more also looking at sustainability transition. And they have this notion of transition experiments as short-term actions through which Alternative structures, cultures, and practices are explored. And this notion is part of a bigger, bigger uh, concept of actually approach, which I'm not going to, to discuss here, which is that of transition management, which is a sort of, you know, many of people in the room, and including myself, are planners, you could say it's a reinvention of planning as a, a, a more a systemic change oriented uh, planning. Um, I don't know whether they would agree with this, but that's, I think, an easy way to see it. And, and transition experiments are not everything, but are a, a, a key point of it after, you know, the divisioning, et cetera, et cetera, um, identifying potential pathways of change, et cetera, et cetera. It's okay, let's start doing it because a key idea of transition management so it's not long-term planning. It's not rolling out a plan. It's it's learning by doing. Yeah? So you 
you you you you you have a direction, but you don't know how to get there, and you start experimenting also to understand what could be enabled, but also barrier how you might have to adjust uh, to adjust uh, your your approach. And, and and I think these are very useful reference because it, it it can help us place street experiments within this broader scope of uh, of system uh, uh, system uh, change and and even more more specifically in in one of the publications uh, discussing transition management uh, they come up with with these five defining characteristics of of transition management and um, in their interpretation uh, uh, of a uh, defining characteristic of transition experiments, sorry, transition experiments are radical, and radical means here they should be about uh, practices, um, you know, culture structures that are fundamentally three, uh, different than uh, everyday practice. So it really should be something that is different from the status quo. So that's that's the first characteristic. The second is that they should be challenge driven. And the challenge driven is really directly connected to what I just said. They should not be an end in itself, but they should be a potential first step of a system change. Eh? The, something that goes in the direction of a long term fundamental change of a particular system, because of course they don't develop this idea to the field of mobility. It could also be applied in agriculture or in energy. Yeah? Transition study is very broad in terms of the field of application. The third characteristic is that they should be feasible. And, and here you immediately see the challenge, radical and feasible at the same time. Yeah? I, 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 I'm, good, uh, I'm playing with students in this day to, 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 to prompt them to, to figure out, uh, to, to conceive uh, a transition experiment. And, and, uh, yeah, being both radical and feasible. Feasible means you should be able to do it in the short term um, and, 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 and learn from it because the whole idea here is learning by doing uh, uh, and, 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 and so you have to do things. You cannot just be, keep talking about it or, or trying and, and negotiate. Uh, so you, you have to be able to do it. So feasibility is crucial. And the learning by doing is also what is uh, central is the idea of strategic, which might be different than how we use strategic in other, in other contexts. So here strategic means it's all about learning. And so uh, a, a key notion of transition management is that experiments uh, can fail, actually it might be very good that they fail because the chance that you learn something is bigger. So that by the real, Failure if you if you not learn from an experiment, uh, and so strategic is about uh, what who should learn what how, uh, and again thinking at this as something that can open up a uh, longer term uh, trajectory for uh, change. It, it's quite interesting, by the way. It seems obvious, but a very recent article that studies that have analyzed hundreds of experiments, not only mobility and I would say mainly in, in other fields, more in the field of climate mitigation, climate adaptation, uh, they found that uh, learning, while in all the theories and even in the, all the official documents is highlighted as, as key, is very poorly, something like only 1% of this experiment, there was a, a clear strategy of what, how, uh, uh, who, and, and why should, should learn. So it seems obvious, but it's not uh, there. And even, in, in, in these experiments that I've reviewed, uh, it's always said one of the big drawbacks, there's little of monitoring, evaluating, uh, and, and certainly not that feeding back into those promoting experiments, the broader city. Often these research projects are more you know, curiosity driven by academics. They're not integral to the experiment itself. Now, and last but not least, they must be communicating and mobilizing, and that might mean that they should not only engage those actually doing the experiment, but they should also be able to engage a broader public, eh, to, to mobilize uh, a debate, uh, to, 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 to uh, inspire a much broader, broader public. And uh, there's as yet no research that analyzes street experiments with this 
within this framework, but we are actually in, in the process of doing that and, and, and try and connect this uh, uh, their their performance on this characteristic to the actual impact that they have or not have. That's our long-term research project, but it's still ongoing. But just as an impression, what first things emerging if if you use this this framework to assess street experiments, you could say that definitely some strong points is is is, is radical. But there's at least many of them. You know, it's quite quite quite. Uh, strongly different, quite profoundly different from what a tree is for. That, that, that what they're experimenting with, they are actually also feasible. I mean, they they happen and they happen in a lot of uh, place. Of course, there's interesting. What are the the, the the approaches they make that possible? And they're also strong in that communicating, mobilizing the the, the, the very fact that they happen in public space, which is not necessarily the case for other types of experiments, certainly outside the field of Mobility. The, 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 there's, you know, people just come across them. They're talked about in the media. So these are strong things. On the other hand, they are much weaker on the dimension of challenge-driven. I also mentioned that the link to, to policy, uh, wider policy process, is very weak. There's hardly any connection in, in, in all, all what uh, what I've seen so far. For instance, with uh, uh, mobility policy of the seeds. Again, there are uh, exceptions, and maybe the, 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 the experiments less known, maybe outside of the Anglo-Saxon context, maybe in Germany, among others, are, are much uh, better connected. But for instance, in Amsterdam, those COVID-19 experiments that I've shown are really totally disconnected from uh, uh, the, the mobility policy of the city, which has, ironically enough, a, a goal to make the city how to lose, not car free, but going in that direction, but they do not connect uh, 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 the two. And also what, what's, what's, what's weak is, is, is the learning, uh, learning from these experiments about enablers and barriers of systemic change. It's also very poorly uh, uh, developed. So maybe the, from the point of view of the third question, how to make them more, more, more transformational, Probably the the sense the essence of the challenge is okay. How can we make them more challenge driven and strategic? Uh, in the sense I said, without making them less radical, feasible, and communicating, mobilizing, because they're already strong on the, in those respects. How can we make stronger on that those first two without making them weaker on those other three? And let me close by two examples that uh, are pushing the borders, I would say, in this direction. And they might point also at the way forward, but that last step, I will really make just a way to open up um, a discussion um, with you. Now, one of the examples pushing the borders is the living street uh, 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 experiment in, in, in Ghent, in, in, in Belgium. And, and this is a really, an, an, uh, you know, a 2.0 uh, open city to say, here the idea is to, to a sort of open street where I would say it's not so much physical activity of, of moving, but it's, it's more using the street as a social space. It's, but it's not for one day, it's for two, two months. Um, and you, you see here it's 15, 20 streets, uh, mostly in the summer for several years now in, in, in Ghent um, on the initiative of the, the local inhabitants. Uh, that's, that's key, by the way, to the feasibility in this case, that they can do that being very radical and feasible by, by the city facilitates this, uh, but they, they want uh, local uh, inhabitants to, to, to first get some consensus about that at the same time uh, the, 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 there are experiments with different ways of moving around. Anyway, parking at a distance from your home, uh, sharing uh, bicycles or cargo bikes, um, um, and so forth. So that's, you could say, it's really something that goes in many ways beyond certainly all the experiments that I've shown you before, what's happening in places like uh, the, the U.S., for instance. And definitely in terms of radical feasible, communicating, mobilizing, is all very strong. If you look at the problem-driven and strategic, um, it, it, 
the, 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 the picture is more mixed and 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 so the connection with with wider policy and and and, and permanent uh, uh, change and, and and in this in this map I've I've superimposed uh, the the location of of um, of living streets in uh, between 2012 2016 and the areas in the neutral circulation plan uh, just approved by the city just a couple of years ago and will be car free and and you see that there there's a disconnect there while these living street experiments are really not only in the city centers are all over the city but interesting the car free areas are still pretty much in the historical centers so in a way the actual plan does not seem to connect of course there probably are all sort of a good reason for this is that also research that might be worthwhile uh, doing but, but you see that this connector is quite interesting also the living street policy which is now been institutionalized in Ghent, but is seen is, is part of the the department that's that's dealing with with social cohesion and 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 enabling that uh, among inhabitants not in the mobility departments but which might be a good thing but which might reinforce which this uh, disconnect. But let's move to an example that maybe in a way is on the other side, which is the super blocks in Barcelona, where you see, on the other hand, a quite strong uh, long term and, 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 and citywide vision of, of shifting uh, you know, two thirds of, of, of the streets from, from a traffic domination to, uh, to from, um, 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 mainly public space function with just necessary traffic uh, uh, still allowed and then next to no motorized traffic and and also part in this case part of really a streetwide uh, concept as, as you see here which by the way also includes uh, uh, whole idea of how public transport has to develop particular surface transport uh, uh, transport buses and also sort of uh, share mobility to, to make this this transition possible. So we say, wow, here you do have the long-term uh, perspective, the connections uh, to policy change, and here again, not all at once, but uh, step by step. Um, but on the other hand, uh, certainly in the, the first years, there's a lot of learning going on, but you could say it, it, it was weaker on, on, on the on, on the feasibility, on and, and, and in a way also on the, on, on the engagement with 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 local people, there also was quite quite some resistance uh, certainly at, at, the, at the beginning, and and um, for people that you know some of it might be ideological, but in some cases it was, it was also born out of need. You know, some people do need their cars or trucks. And, and, and in this new context, for, for you know, might depend on that uh, in, in a hard sense for the work, or maybe even for the care the functions. Also, it's not there might be also a serious reason. And interesting, since this, it's, it's now much less the case here, from what I I understand. But part of this is also making this process more experimental, also more of a learning. By doing instead of rolling up a top-down plan. So, as as my last uh, slide, um, and just for the discussion, I I, I advance the, the hypothesis that maybe a combination of these two approaches uh, could be the way to go, where you both uh, have things happening at the level of long-term visions, of whole city, changing institutions. Uh, at the same time, you have something happen in the short term that experiments happen at the street level and where you focus not so much on institutional change or behavioral change, you know, people exploring different uh, uh, practices. You're not just having both, but having them connected with these uh, new ideas and also new uh, institutional arrangements, enabling experimentation. And at the same time, what is learned from the experiments providing feedback to those plans, to those long-term uh, long, uh, visions, to those institutional change, to adapt them to make better fit what the ground is, is, is showing. And, and the hypothesis here, uh, which by the way, we hope also to test in, in some projects we are involved, is that this process 
uh, these two together could be with the way to accelerate uh, this uh, uh, such a, such a transition. Now here is where where I, I, I stop. I still have some some sources, but uh, main sources for my talk. But I, I can also share this with you in in um, in other ways. Uh, maybe that what I should now do. If, uh, <laughs> of, of somebody else says me as well is to stop stop sharing and uh, see you again. Yeah, hello, hello Luca. <laughs> Thank you for this uh, really uh, fascinating um, talk and this absolutely uh, timely issue. Uh, I think you made it pretty clear what city street experiments are about, what they're seeking to achieve, and also what we know from literature and from research about them um, at the moment. I have received a couple of questions already, and a few are focusing on, on, on the impact, but before we get to that part, I actually want to go back to where you started your presentation, which yes. was when you raised the question of why should we actually experiment? Yes. And for me, that question is actually very much related to who is experimenting. And I think you haven't said too much about this yet. Uh, right. I think you started or you, you nicely summarized that especially in, in the, in the seventies, experimentation was also a mean for citizens to actually express their satisfaction with certain conditions or with certain policies. But now we are witnessing all kinds of actors using including city governments using this new mode of 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 uh yeah of governance of of experimentation and i was wondering if you can tell us a little bit about or a little bit more about who are nowadays the actors driving such yeah. experimentation processes and also what's the role of of the citizens in here yeah yeah that's a very good question and again i'm by the way, it's also a question that that begs more research. But again, because that's not the kind of question that public health researchers ask. But that's that would be the question that planning uh, uh, researchers and urban designers uh, rightly ask, <laughs> like you. And we should research. But from what I know of this, and again, I'm, I'm answering for this kind of experiments. And so let me clear that I, I made a choice eh? because you could say that. Uh, why more had the Google uh, company that experimented with self-driving cars also experimented with city streets in their own way. So there are it's not these are not the only kinds of experiment, but I, I made a choice that you know goes of experiment that, that point in, in one direction. You have you can also have other sort of experiments, you again have other actors, for instance, big companies. But the kind of experiments I showed here, eh? so uh it is indeed a combination um of government and and citizens um with often so but it's very interesting the role of the government which is not so much at least in the cases that that work that of uh, the traditional role of you know conceiving and implementing something is much more the role of uh, making something possible, but then letting others do that. Uh, and the making it possible, it could be giving a little subsidies, but quite crucially, allowing going against rules, for instance, or, or, or you know, like closing a street, uh, which is supposed to be open or taking away parking is supposed to be there. So it's, 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 it's facilitating. Um, very often there is, uh, quite always, actually, an interface, an intermediary, an NGO, uh, also in Ghent, for instance. Now it's been institutionalized, but certainly at the beginning there was this uh, uh, this lab from Troy. So there's a logo there that was an NGO being an intermediary between citizens and government. So government that wanted to to to, to have this happen, citizens they might be thinking about it, but they, they needed help. Uh, in in developing the process, so these organizations usually have two functions. But you see it also coming back in open streets in in almost all, all of these examples, also in play streets. On one hand, to help citizens uh, find their way in the bureaucracy of the city, because these things touch all sorts of regulation in all sorts of sectors, from mobility, public space, etc. Et 
also to get access to this resource, but also to help citizens help citizens interact with each other, find enough consensus to do this. So they are both mediator between uh, med between cities at the city, and they help citizens organize. Again, these are these type of experiments which I'm talking about, which are relatively uh, institutionalized or formalized. Of course, you have also legal experiments that maybe are quite similar in a way that I've not talked about. In that case, that's very different. That's these are some there are some people, activists, artists, that do something like this without asking anybody. Eh? That's that's what tactical urbanism is is, is about. Um, well, as a last point, what this of course also raises any on, on tactical urbanism, so the kind of uh, 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 illegal or, or totally free ones, there's quite some critical literature emerging is because, of course, the who question is who is included, who is excluded as, as far as the system concerned. And, and tactical urban has been criticized for being quite an elite activity, especially in the US, focus on, on sort of uh, young, white, educated urban professionals that, for instance, don't risk so much if do something illegal. Whereas if a minority uh, a person would do the same, the police would immediately intervene in a very hard way. So again, the who question, and also in these cases, you might, it's not that, you know, consensus is not everybody. Eh? They're also season excluded. So I think also very important research is understand, and again, there's hardly anything about it, who is included, who's excluded, how can we make these experiments more inclusive? And what would that mean, you know, not just for the process, but also for the contents of the of the experiment? Yeah, thank you, thank you for this uh, answer. I think uh, you're absolutely right. It's also a question of uh, of power and and uh, yeah, who's who's driving um, and and controlling such processes. Um, I think another question I, I received is um, a little bit related to um, the point where you talked about what city experiments actually are and what they're for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think in, in your definition, you actually said that city uh, experiments are aimed at, at exploring systemic change in urban mobility. And I yeah. felt it was actually quite interesting because a couple of sentences later, you said that the result was um, we need actually less space for traffic and more space for yeah. social interaction. Yeah. So yeah. I was wondering in how far city street experiments are actually much more than just replacing um, streets with cars, uh, was, um, cars by, by having more bicycle lanes or yeah. whether it just goes much beyond that in terms of facilitating or reorganizing urban life, reimagining cities. And uh, uh, Leonie also posed that point in terms of what, what we can also learn from, from, from history in that regard, how boulevards and alleys looked like and yeah, whether it's just about reimagining public spaces in general and not just with, with respect to mobility issues. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm totally, I totally agree, and, and, and maybe I should say even more explicit. That's why I said, uh, why, why you don't see pop-up bike lanes here or, 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 or pop-up zebra crossings? And, and I, 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 I said, and I also not say from cars to people, I say from car to people, for me, it means exactly what you're saying now, to rediscover the street as a social space, of course, next to also traffic space. So that's, that's, uh, but in a way, that's also my choice, my choice and of many others, but it is a choice because you could say, uh, no, it's only about, and by my way, and again, and maybe in that sense, I'm also a bit odd. For me, mobility is also this, what you are saying, you know, it's definitely not just mobility in a strict uh, sense. Mobility is a social activity. And, and you know, if you think at walking, Okay, walking is mobility, but it's so many other things, and it's also social interaction, and, and etc. It's like, well, where is the border? But maybe I'm totally open to say that maybe we should say systemic change in mobility in public space, or just in public space, if that's clear. But definitely, it's not only mobility in any narrow sense. I I'm under, I agree 100%. Yeah, thank you. Um, 
Yeah, no, I, I got that from your presentation. I just uh, thought it was interesting and also to read that in your in your paper that the focus was the the way how you define city suite experiment was very much still uh, aligned with the mobility question. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then maybe the I mean, I mean, to, to me, system is changing mobility is that direction. Maybe you should, but as, as I said, maybe it, in that definition would be good to have that more explicitly. And I also agree with the comment. That we can learn from history. I don't know if you, if you remember that, but in, in the picture show you of the three images of the Amsterdam street, being quite fascinating to look at a street from the 19th century because, in many ways, these are the kind of streets that we see. Of course, there were no cars there, right? so it was it was not you didn't have to reclaim. It was more as it was, but it was much more a social space than even again the 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 contemporary image of that street where there are bicycles there are but still the it was much more a social uh, space the space that is it's also fascinating i'm sure many of you have done to see films from uh, that these first films where you see it's really the share everything was a shared space you see bikes you see trams you see horses you see people walking play so so in that sense, I think history, uh, you know, and of course it's not, today it's different, it's a different context, but it is very inspiring uh, in any case to realize that it could be different and, and also in, sometimes very directly, how could that be different? What could we imagine happening if the, if it, the arrangement was, was different? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Luca, I was wondering if you could stop sharing your screen yeah. so we can see you actually yeah. much better than That's just in this I, I really small talking. window. <laughs> I, I also proposed that uh, maybe, yeah, and then maybe everybody should put your faces. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks. Um, I, I think you also focused, and I think it's a very in, uh, important aspect, a lot on, on the transformative uh, potential of, of city suite experiments. And I think it's quite interesting, actually, that if you look into the transitional or tra transition literature, they really there's a very strong argument that uh, such experiments can actually steer systemic change processes. Um, yeah. But for me, it's actually, it's also a matter of scale. Transformation is also a matter of scale because yeah. for me, it goes beyond just making an, a temporary intervention in one street permanent. It's also yeah. a question of how can you actually uh, scale that up? How can you make a project programmatic and how can you embed the knowledge also institutionally? And I think that is a little bit aligned with what, what Astrid also said um, or posted here as a question in terms of how can you make also a temporary change of regulations into a, a long-term change really? Yeah. And, and what, what are the ingredients for this? Yeah, that's that's uh, t totally true, and and that was I was trying to bring in with uh, with the last few slides and, and the Barcelona example, uh, which, which which has a different scale, uh, um, and and I totally agree. It's not just making this these changes permanent in, in a few streets. It's really understanding. Um, what making these changes not only permanent but uh, diffused and becoming the new norm would require, and, and that of course requires go, going beyond the, the street, uh, requires thinking at the whole transportation system, and, and but maybe more than that, uh, thinking also on the land use part, because maybe a, a city where this would be the norm, the new norm, let's say, of the old new uh, norm rediscovered, maybe it's also a city where uh, uh, of short distances, uh, you know, the 15 minute neighborhoods that, it, that, that Paris is trying to develop. So there's also a land use component of more mixing and, 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 uh, yeah, and, 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 and you know, shared mobility concept, but also public transport concept. It's interesting in Barcelona, there's really also a lot of thinking about both shared mobility, but also a new uh, sort of the bus system is being reconceived to fit. So I definitely agree that making this permanent is you know should us it, in, in a way i think the experiments the birthing of this experiment again is the learning it's not 
in a way, if they can be made permanent, that's great. So for the people living there, but really more important is what they teach us about what making this the new norm would require indeed, uh, also at higher scales and, and, and work on that scale. But then, and then when we go back to the connecting Barcelona and Hand, I still think that that's a searching process. So it's not that when we understand that we should stop experimenting because experimenting where we can still push the border further uh, because we need to change so much and so radically uh, that I, I really cannot see in any other way than a process where you change something at the institutional level, physical big investment infrastructure, and but then you keep experimenting and you find ways in which one feedbacks into the, the other. I think that's the way to make it to make uh, you know, much the ambition. Yeah. I think it was also super interesting uh, related to this when you said that actually only one percent uh, of uh, of okay. the experiments are focused on on learning. And here I was wondering, is it about that we what well, is the reason that we just don't know how to systematically learn from them or how many experiments are actually interested in learning something from what they're doing? And I think it's related to the question of who is driving such processes. I mean, if you have a city government implementing sure. an experiment, maybe it's actually not interested in, 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 in finding something out. And it's not about learning by doing, but it's using this mode in order to implement something what is you know was what was already planned before yeah yeah, yeah. no that, that that's a very good uh, a very good uh, question again that 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 should be researched more but i i think it's also not not a coincidence that you see the weakness on learning also with the weaknesses on that challenge driven so the link to you know citywide long-term policies because I think it's when you make that connection that a need to learn emerges. If you think, okay, these experiments are really for us a way to move in, in this direction, also to learn, to make our policies better, then you have a reason to learn. But otherwise, because it's also not, and again, that, that analysis was made on, on climate change experiments. It was not this particular experiment I show, but what I, I've seen in, in the few analysis that, that reflect on this in these experiments is not that the learning does not happen. I mean, that happens little, but the learning that happens is about the experiment itself. How can we make this open street next year better? How can we attract more people? Uh, how can, you know, make it... So it's really internal. It's, it's really only focused on the experiment itself, the event, and, and not... On, on changing the system and 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 uh, and I think that if, if that connection is not made with with policies or at least ambitions at a higher level, I mean even if the learning happen, I, I think that's not the interest. Of course, it's interest. It's important that you learn also that uh -huh. the real learning is the learning about that that systemic change. Uh -huh. I think. But I guess it's also up to to us as as researchers to follow up on such yeah, sure, uh, sure, projects sure. and not just you know accompany them and then once they're over we focus on something else because then we will never have comparative assessments, uh, yeah, of the impact of uh, of such experiments. Um, but I was uh, wondering, um, and that's related to uh, one of the questions I received earlier from Afram which focused um, a little bit on, 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 and I think it's also an aspect of, of trans, uh, transformative potential actually yeah. related to the question of behavior in how far can actually temporary interventions or these city street experiments will, and, and there are temporary most of the time, yeah. limited to a week or to a day or to a couple of months and how far do they actually have the power to also change people's behavior in the long run? And do you know of any studies yeah. con conducted in this, uh, in this context? Yeah, again, that's, that's uh, by the way, what, what you just said about us research, I think it's a very relevant point because to me, it was really a surprise. I mean, I had that hunch, but it was a surprise to see how little in our field, again, all what I found is the public health, these things are researched while they're, you know, it's happening everywhere. And again, in, 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 in 
there are instances where there, is, there are these higher, higher ambitions, maybe in a confused way without clear links, but that's where research could help, right? So I do think we should do more. And there's so much fantastic material out there, so totally agree with that. And, and in terms of um, the, the research, the, 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 the research I reviewed is about a lot of it behavioral change, but indeed kind of uh, focusing on the experiment itself only doesn't follow up. And again, there are different reasons because of the frame of the project, uh, the frame of the research, maybe because of the goal of those doing the experiments many times is not that permanent longer term change. But for the time, the interesting is that for the time of the experiments, you do see a measure of change that models would never predict. It's really in, even in context where, where, you know, like the US, where it was a very carbon culture, you see it's temporary, but it's huge. So at the very least, that we've been interested to understand the mechanism behind that, uh, that change that does happen. And of course, the barriers to that change not becoming permanent. But of course, because the experiment stops, because quite literally streets are opened up to traffic, it's not that you can say, oh, but people, you know, it's not the conditions stay and people change behavior. The condition also change. So you really need, and in that sense, uh, uh, Ghent, I, I showed us pushing the border because uh, that becomes really interesting because it's not one day, it's two months. In two months, people need to re reorganize everyday life. It's also not, it's not just the holidays. The, the, the deliveries has to be rethought. And of course, those are very interesting to understand um, yeah, why is that possible? What, what, what happens? And I, again, even in Ghent, I'm really surprised that I couldn't find a lot of systematic research, some, but not a lot. Uh, maybe it's there. We have to look uh, better. But again, it's also interesting to understand what barriers this experiment shows, why some people are changing behavior, some others are not changing. There's some very, for instance, in Amsterdam, it was not really research, it was more debate. It was really interesting because some of the opposition in that street I show you uh, came from older people that said that because of this change, their children living in the suburbs were not visiting them as often as they used to because they could not park their car there as easily as in the past. So again, this is something that you understand only if you do it, uh, and, but you have to learn from it because you need an answer to this or some disabled persons that need. So in, in a way, it's, it's, uh, I think, I really believe in people say the future is not something you can predict, but something you can shape. So to me, the interesting thing is of this experiment is that they show you possibilities, but also barriers to change. So. And, and then you, you can understand, okay, how can I profit, benefit uh, uh, from that, th those enablers? How can I deal with, uh, with the barriers? And again, it, it, it's an iterative process. I think it's a very different approach to change than a sort of predict and control kind of approach in which, in, in the case of trans transitions, transformation, so it's about that, cannot work because we don't know not only how to get there, but we also don't really know what is that there, you know? And 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 and, and it's, I think it's also a different way of looking at, at, at change and, uh, and, and, and research and, and relationship between research and policy. Mm. And we should be, yeah, yeah. I, I could discuss uh, this with you much, much longer, um, but no, I was really, already yeah. told we are over time. <laughs> So, um, yes, thank you already from, from my side, um, Luca. It was really a, a fascinating um, input and, and discussion. Um, I would like to hand over to Vlad again, who wanted to say a few uh, last uh, words, I guess. Yes, thank you. Uh, actually, thank you both. Uh, Luca for yeah. the uh, highly motivating and interesting presentation, Francisco for the moderation. And actually, I'd like to thank you, uh, the audience. Uh, we had uh, around 50 people now, a bit less, but yeah. Thank you so much for attending this event today. And before saying goodbye, I'd like to actually 
uh, remind you that the next lecture we have uh, is scheduled on Monday, November 23rd. And uh, just briefly, having a chance uh, uh, probably to promote this lecture, I'd like to ask uh, Leonie Fischer to say a few words because uh, she is the person inviting our next lecture. So if you don't mind, Leonie. Yes, sure. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so proud. I would otherwise have a poster at hand. Um, we will uh, see a lecture, a guest lecture of Hesekia Gereka uh, from South Africa, Rhodes University. He's an urban ecologist, actually. So he's from the urban ecology part. And he was working on uh, yeah, how gathering wild edible plants and how yeah, harvesting usable plants within urban settings can contribute to livelihoods in the urban settings in uh, Southern Africa. We will have a test call with him tomorrow, so hopefully it works as well as it did today. I think the connection to um, yeah, Southern Africa is a little bit more tricky than to look at today, uh, but I'm very much uh, looking forward to this uh, guest lecture as well. Thank you, Nelly. Uh, thanks again to Luca, Francisca and uh, everybody. And um, yeah, I hope to see you on Monday. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Luca. And please uh, let, 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 let us continue this, this conversation. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm also learning a lot today. I'm sure I will learn more if we keep uh, interacting. So thank you for uh, having invited me to this. Yeah, thank you for joining. Um, it, was, it was a pleasure to have you here. And I'm, I'm pretty sure we will follow up with some, from some questions and, and see whether yeah, there are any opportunities to collaborate also in the future on this issue. Yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so bye have bye. a nice evening. <laughs> nice evening to everybody. Bye bye. 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 bye.